After months of holdups and delays, the Alamo Drafthouse Theater at 28 Liberty had its opening day this October. We got a chance to speak with Fosin's Tom Costanzo about what the company's been doing with this 60 floor tower and to take a look around at its newest cinematic attraction. Can you tell us uh, how we got to opening day here, what the original timeline was for the theater and how that was affected by the pandemic? I'd say, you know, it, it, it's been a, quite the roller coaster ride. Um, you know, Alamo had completed their construction pretty much 95% right as COVID hit. How did they get to open up now? Is this just the time that it took them to get their permits or did they think that now is the right time because of how the city's reopening? They emerged from chapter 11, uh, accepted this lease, completed the construction. Uh, and as you know, I believe uh, the, the city is experiencing backlog of permits and approvals with the FDNY. So that actually took the longest. They were completing the construction you know, took a matter of weeks, but getting the, getting the final approvals, which is what held it up even more. So uh, they just received their liquor license and their final approvals, you know, at the end of, at the end of last month. And can you tell us about this space? Um, are there a lot of skyscrapers in Manhattan that have space in the basement for a multiplex theater? There are actually five levels below grade in this building. We spent, you know, you know, a great deal of our reposition capital in repositioning this retail box. It's 200,000 square feet, you know, on four different levels. Alamo's the anchor, food hall on the top level, uh, and we're talking to a number of different tenants in between, but not activating that space. How much uh, more space do you have to lease? I think we, you know, we're about 60% leased. Uh, so I think, you know, we have 60,000 feet ish uh, left over. And uh, what kind of tenant mix do you see filling in the rest? We're, we're, we currently have a lease out with, uh, you know, what I call more active space, you know, doing things as opposed to the traditional selling things. But we're more focused on continuing of entertainment, active spaces, uh, destination type uh, tenants. You know. When it's all said and done, do you think that um, the tenant mix will look different than it would? had it not been for the pandemic? I think that sh that, that ship had sailed pre-COVID. So I think we had already pivoted and started looking more toward activation with destination entertainment and active spaces pre-COVID. That just kicked in the sort of high key. And uh, how about the rest of the tower? During the pandemic, we signed the lease uh, with AIG for, to keep their downtown headquarters here in this building, which got us over 95% occupied in the office tower. So, the office is doing great. We have, you know, a great roster. And you have this real unique concept on the top floor where a uh, person was an investor in the uh, Manhattan restaurant, right? So we entered into a partnership, a joint venture with Danny Myers Union Square Hospitality to do a very unique restaurant and event space on the entire 60th floor, which pre-COVID was doing extremely well. And we're looking very much forward to uh, a reinvigorated experience up there, you know, probably right after the new year. Um, you know, we're, we have our ducks in a row, you know, we're, we're starting to talk to staff and we're getting in that room too. It's such a, uh, a big risk, right, to take that instead of using those office and, and try something like this. Bringing someone like Danny's experience, know-how, and track record to the buildings made us see that as less risk. You want to cut that risk as much as possible. And it, actually, I thought it was a very smart play because it was a big driver, as Alamo was also, and the activation of retail and bringing those office tenants in. They want to have a full experience you know, on site. For instance, they, you know, some of the tenants decided they didn't have to build uh, an assembly space that they could rely on Manhattan uh, you know, to do that so they can actually take less space. You know, that was actually a factor in the number of leases. You could almost spend your whole day in the building. You pretty much could. Remember when you guys bought it, um, it was a huge price tag, but it also raised eyebrows because you guys bought it all cash. It, it just seems like a very uh, unique uh, way to buy something. In hindsight, you know, eight years later, it looks like a bargain. You know, three hundred and thirty dollars a foot. You can't, you know, you can't buy, you can't buy dirt for that anywhere. Certainly not in Manhattan. So yes, at the time it was a full price. Uh, you know, but looking back, it was a phenomenal investment. You know, for the company. Do you think it'll be a long-term hold? Will you? bring them in partner to sell down some of the equity? I think uh, we'll continue to evaluate it, but I think it will be a long-term helpful. This is a, this is a, uh, this is a project of passion at this point. It's an iconic landmark tower. Uh, 
you know, that, you know, no matter where you go in the world, it's recognizable. You know, we've done all the heavy lifting, you want to reap the benefits. And it's a good place, you know, to hang, you know, for us to call home. You know, I think we'll be holding on to this one for the time being.